السلام علیکم یہ میں نیشنل بینک ماڈل کالونی سے برانچ مینیجر بات کر رہا ہوں آج صبح ہمارے پاس نیا کیش آیا ہے جس میں کہ یہ نوٹ ہیں اور ہزار کے بھی آئے ہیں پانچ سو کے بھی اور پانچ ہزار کے بھی سارا فریش کیش ہے اور اس میں جو ہے وہ یہ حالات ہیں ان نوٹوں کے یہ اور اس طرح کے کتنے پیکٹ چلے گئے ہیں مجھے نہیں پتا اب لوگ واپس لے کر آئیں گے تو پتا چلے گا یہ تو ایک آدمی نے کسٹمر نے واپس کیا ہے تو یہ پتا چلا اس کے علاوہ ہم نے ایک اور بندل بھی چیک کیا یہ ایک اور پیکٹ ہے اس میں بھی یہی حال ہے یہ سیریل ہے یہ سیریل ہے اس کی اور اس میں یہ ایک نوٹ ہے اٹھائیس ہے انتیس 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 بیس طرح کا یہ دو دو نوٹ ہر پیکٹ میں دو نوٹ اس طرح سے ہیں یہ کیا سلسل ہے This finally made State Bank of Pakistan to take notice of it and issued a clarification. According to the spokesperson of State Bank of Pakistan, it was not a case of fake currency notes. Rather, these notes were somehow misprinted and there was nothing to worry about. Nobody has to worry about it. And according to the spokesperson, uh, anyone who can get hold of these currency notes accidentally they can get it exchanged from nearby uh, uh, any branch of the bank but one thing is for sure Pakistanis are panicked it was only last year when fake uh, notes of rupees 5000 shot every Pakistani and so far the Pakistani authorities could not come up uh, Uh, to find a foolproof solution to stop these fake currency notes and and now we are facing another saga of misprinted currency notes Xiaomi has announced the start of deliveries for its first electric vehicle, the SU7, this month, marking its entry into the competitive Chinese automobile market. Xiaomi has established 59 stores across 29 cities for facilitating orders. The company announcement was made through a Weibo post. A grand launch event for the SU7 is scheduled for March 28, coinciding with the unveiling of its price tag. China experienced an 18% increase in EV sales in January and February, trailing closely behind the 21% growth observed throughout 2023. In order to attract consumers amid weakening demand, key players like BYD have implemented aggressive price reductions in the Chinese EV market. Xiaomi's EVs will be manufactured by a unit of state-owned automaker BAIC Group in Beijing with an annual capacity of 2 lakh units of the vehicle. With a $10 billion investment in the automotive sector over the next decade, Xiaomi is among the few newcomers in China's EV market to receive approval amid concerns of oversupply.
देखिए चुप करो यार मैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी का अनन्य परिस्थितियां बदल के रहती है लेकिन मैंने हर परिस्थिति में बीजेपी के लिए काम किया है और अब भी करूंगा पहले से कई गुना ज्यादा कर I, I think it's very rare for three events to happen on the trot. Please interference in. Trending burning question, powered by Reva University and Century Club Prime. Hello, and welcome. You watching the trending burning question with me, Shavin Sen. Ladies and gentlemen, as the election season draws on India, there is major trepidation to put skin in the 2024 game by the Congress High Command. Sources say that Congress heavyweights want to opt out of the Lok Sabha contest. In Madhya Pradesh, Kamal Nath's son, Nakul Nath, has confirmed to Republic TV that his father will not be contesting the Lok Sabha polls. The situation is similar in Karnataka. Congress President Malikarjun Kharge is reluctant to fight uh, from his bastion Kalburgi. And the high command is now mulling to field his son, son-in-law in fact. But this does not end. Same is the case with Ashok Gelot in Rajasthan. But if you contrast that with the BJP which has come up with its second list, then you have several former chief ministers who have been fielded. For instance, Manohar Lal Khattar is going to contest from Haryana. You have Basavraj Bumai, who's been contesting from Karnataka. And there are several union ministers who have essentially been fielded. So is it almost like a walkover by the India Alliance? Is it because the way the Bharatiya Janta Party essentially started their campaign saying, Abki Bar, Char So Par, has that really spooked the Congress Party? Listen into some of the Congress leaders and then we begin the trending burning question. पूरा पूरा प्लानिंग है हमारी और पूरी स्ट्रेटजी बना रखी है हम एनडीए सरकार की विफलता हमारी सरकार ने जो अच्छे काम किए यूपीए सरकार के समय जो हम अच्छे काम किए हैं वो सारी और अभी तीन महीने में जो गवर्नेंस ये दे नहीं पा रहे हैं ये सारे मुद्दे मिला करके और जो यूथ है वो पूरी के तरी, तरीके से अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट को लेकर के जो नाराजगी देश के सरकार के प्रति है वो सब चीजें जनता के सामने टुडे इज कमिंग टू बैंगलोर लेट अस सी व्हाट ही इज अ बॉस ऑफ और कांग्रेस ना he has to take on idea his dish that dish mm. to contest or not to contest it is left to him on the trending burning question tonight uh, representing the bharatiya janata party is the spokesperson charu pragya and uh, george korean on the other side let me ask this question first to you george korean on yes. the same very day yes. when the bharatiya janata party is fielding their top guns piyush goel then you have several other union ministers former chief ministers in haryana as well as in Kar karnataka contrast that with the list that has come out by the congress party burning gorov gogoi the only name that they put up from the state of assam and your beloved rahul gandhi all the other top congress leaders have decided that they are not going to contest the lok sabha elections some says some say that look here it's almost retirement stage so we are not going to contest the, the elections so even before the election begins it's almost like we have lost the game well uh, shavan uh, good evening to you to my co panelist charu here on the show and to your audience uh, let me begin by saying that uh, it's not all over uh, uh, year uh, i mean as you say uh, the india bloc or be it the principal opposition party the congress party is confident about giving a tough fight to modi in 2024 
And uh, having said that, uh, it's not about our senior Congress leaders uh, backing out of the, uh, of, or for, for that matter, contesting from uh, Lok Sabha elections this uh, this time, it's, it's just a matter of time because it's, they're all 70, 75 plus and they have about three, four decades of experience. Uh, they carry about three, four uh, decades of experience. They have been MLAs a number of times and Lok Sabha MPs a number of times, having you know, been ministers in, in the union government. So uh, calling out, you know, saying that, you know, they are shying away from contesting 2024 would not be a right, appropriate uh, statement that you would be making at this point in time for the larger audience. I strongly believe that, you know, Congress party have a dirt of pool of young, fresh blood, you know, who want okay, to judge. contest the... Mr. Korean, why don't you then name one single big leader from the Congress party who's willing to contest? Given the fact that from the state of Gujarat, a short while back, news came in that Bharat Solanki says that I'm busy touring Jammu and Kashmir, so I'm not going to contest the elections. Digvijay Singh in Madhya Pradesh says, I'm not going to contest the elections. There are some reports now coming in that Manish Tiwari may not be contesting the elections. Now, you please tell me, what message is the Congress party really sending across? Well, I strongly believe that, you know, the message the Congress party would be sending out to the larger, larger audience is that, you know, it would be a very good message uh, uh, to begin with because we need young, fresh blood to come into political, electoral politics and... Uh, uh, giving away, uh, we, we would, they would be definitely mentoring the youth uh, in the coming days and take up uh, organizational roles. Uh, uh, in, in the Bharatiya Janata Party, we see that you know uh, the government keeps changing and you know they keep changing names uh, here and there. So no one consistently is contesting elections except for a few, uh, which is a good thing. I strongly believe that Congress Party is uh, learning something from the Bharatiya Janata Party in this regard. You're quite optimistic on that part, Mr. Korean, but uh, Charu Prakya, as far as the BJP is concerned, some would say, like, for instance, uh, what's happening in the state of Karnataka, that you have brought in Basavraj Bumai. Shobha Karandala Jale has been moved from Udupi to Bengaluru. That was also because there was palpable anger against the parliamentarian. That's the local report that is coming in. But having said that, is the focus right now particularly in the state of Maharashtra and in Karnataka? Because in Maharashtra also you're finding it tough to negotiate with Ekna Chinde as well as Ajit Pawar. Not a very good evening to you, Shavan. Let me begin by congratulating every candidate on BJP's second list. We are absolutely geared up for Abki Bar Char Supar. It's a fantastic balance of youth and experience. It's a list where we have fielded three XCMs, 11 sitting central ministers, and that actually is in stark contrast to the way Congress is functioning. I'll tell you why. It is always believed that a good leader leads from the front. In any battlefield, a good general is one who is down on the ground with his troop. In the case of Bharti Janata Party, it is absolutely true. In the case of Congress, their leaders want to hide. They don't want to contest. They don't even want to risk uh, running a campaign because they know they are already on losing ground. In fact, their losing ground has been uh, so firm that their own alliance partner, Mamta Didi, comes up with a list of her candidates and Congress didn't even know about it. Congress didn't even know that they don't have an alliance with the TMC. So that's the state of Congress. Uh, I'm not going to generalize it and say that's the case for the entire opposition. But moving on from there, I think um, we are going to focus on every corner of the country. It's not going to be that we are more focused on one area, not so much on the other. Wherever we have alliance partners, we have decided on the seat share already. It will be, it's already been discussed. It will be declared very, very soon. The seat share for Bihar has been discussed. The seat share for uh, the South has been discussed as it has been for the state of Maharashtra as well. So, like I said, this is no fluke. This is sure hard work. This is excellent planning. This is all hands of deck on, uh, all hands on deck but and Charu, it's all doll leaders says... leading from the front. The Congress says that fielding Gaurav Gogoi, Vaibhav, Gelot, Nakul Nath, it's the second generation, fresh phrase, young blood. You, on the other hand, are only fielding those who have been experienced, not really bringing in the, you know, perhaps that fresh mix into it. That's, that's what the retort coming in from the Congress party. Does that really hold? 
Oh, not at all. And uh, I'm not even going to dignify that with an answer. If you put both our lists together, you see how many youngsters we are fielding, how many people are under the age of 40, how many people are under the age of 50. There are some young people like Dhawal Patel who've been working behind the scenes for, I think, as long as I can remember, 15 odd years. And today he's been given a ticket. So that is fabulous. Um, the important thing is, again, I'm going to repeat this. Let Congress field whoever they want. But the public is not going to be fooled because to the people, it is obvious that Sonia ji chooses to go to a Rajya Sabha from Rajasthan and not Himachal because they're not sure of their own MLAs. It's clear that Rahul Gandhi or Priyanka Gandhi Vadra, they don't even want to mention or talk about Uttar Pradesh because uh, they're not sure what's going to happen. Last they contested in the state, their vote share was limited to 2.5%. That's the level to which Congress has been decimated. Okay. Ashutosh wants to respond. Ashutosh, the question that I also asked George Kurian is that whatever said and done, if Rahul Gandhi today says that I'm doing Bharat Jodo Nyay Yatra, and what he essentially sees is that his entire team, his entire team seems to have left him in the lurch, starting from Malikarjun Kharge to Digvijay Singh in Madhya Pradesh to Bharat Solanki in Gujarat, almost each of his big names have actually deserted him. It's not about bringing in no, fresh... No, what you are saying here is that the older generation Gandhi. is not shying away, but you know, gracefully giving way to the younger if it, generation if it all, the argument for about caring fresh forward the baton of uh, you know, democratic bring, bring forces the and the Gandhian ideology, which is under attack. That Rahul Gandhi is no I mean, longer the younger generation. You have to remember that when Narendra Modi no, took over, that is 2014, if the rationale is if the rationale is bringing in fresh... Ashutosh, hear me out. Ashutosh, hear me out. One minute. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Hear me out. George Kurian says that, you know, why should you really worry? Rather, you should welcome this, that you have uh, the old guns out. You have the young Turks coming in. If that's the rational, then, you sh then Rahul Gandhi should also be out. He's no longer the younger generation. For once, I think, so the fascination to see, think that Rahul Gandhi is in his, you know, early 30s. He's not. The entire nation so knows what, about what it. You you may what like you to have just that he's the younger is generation, the he's the young That's Gandhi who's you know, who on a discovery of India. No, what you have just voiced is the fear that strikes Modi ka parivar. Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Jodo Nyayatra has inspired the young. It has caught the imagination of India, this Panch Nyay that is offering. And that is what is scaring BJP. That's why you will always see uh, him being attacked. And by, by his age, I mean, this was the age when Mahatma Gandhi came back and entered politics. He's not old like Narendra Modi, who is nearly 75. And unlike uh, in the past, when he uh, asked everyone above 75 to retire, he's sticking to his chair. And uh, you are bringing people like one Manohar Lal Khattar, no, you when petty right like Rajendra Singh are leading the party. So Be gracious for a change. That in JP, it was actually Modi who had to kick out people like Advani ji and uh, Murli Manohar Joshi. And here in Congress, when the younger generation has decided to take the fight forward, and the older generation has said, okay, we will be your gurus, we will guide you, they have a problem. The problem is actually the name that you have taken, Rahul Gandhi. He has been fighting, he has declared that this is a fight of ideologies. And if the younger generation today is inspired by it. It, it, it may uh, be a fight for ideology to, to fight. fight. Now, Ashutosh, just to, just to remind you, to bully this just to have this fight. If you believe that, if you believe that, if if you believe that Rahul Gandhi is some general who's uh, taking on the war, he's a lonely general right now. Where are his soldiers? The soldiers are, are just naming soldiers? them. You can see them in his uh, nayatras. And it is those soldiers, when you see them being put in the uh, battle, which is scaring Modi ka parivar. So it keeps talking about why... In some states, I'm told that they are even finding it difficult to, to get their candidates in place. Not fighting when there are people now, like... You know, for instance, Nath, I'll give you an example. And, uh, now, I'll give you an example. Uh, in the, in the last... In, in the last... Okay, Charu, there is an interesting... Just before this debate, just, just before this debate, just before this debate, Charu, I was speaking to someone from Madhya Pradesh. I was told the figure, the number of Congress leaders, even booth workers, Congress workers, grassroots workers, 
who have left the Congress party has run up to almost 5,000 in number. So effectively, George, what is happening is that the Bharatiya Janta Party today is saying that now it is going to be a booth mukth Congress party. So BJP is not happy with just the top leadership leaving. Now they want that even your booths, even the booth leaders, Congress workers, grassroots workers, they should also quit. That's the situation, George. And then Charu, you can respond. Well, Shavan, uh, I don't quite uh, agree to the authenticity of the report that you just mentioned about uh, uh, news coming from Madhya Pradesh. I strongly believe that the Congress party uh, has a big cadre at the grassroots level and uh, well equipped uh, to do a campaign, uh, maybe to run a door to door campaign as well. I'm not sure if the Nyaya Atra has given the response that uh, the Congress party was expecting out of it. I'm sure uh, Charu mentioned about the youth uh, experience. Uh, it's, it would be too early for the to come to any kind of conclusion at this point in time because the Congress, Congress party has not uh, released uh, 100 plus uh, as of right now the candidate. Uh, it's around 80, 83 plus. Whereas the uh, Bharati Janata Party is over 200. Uh, and I'm, strong, uh, I'm sure that the Congress party is yet to release about 200 plus seats. Uh, so one could come to a conclusion about uh, youth plus uh, old age and experience you know, com combined together. And I strongly believe that the younger generation need to come, come forward and uh, the youth has to mentor them in a different uh, role altogether. The senior leaders, as you mentioned, be it Kamal Nath, Ashok Gelot, uh, Malik Arjun Karge, they all have their roles to play. They would be doing extensive campaign across India, across the length and breadth of the nation, uh, running running campaigns and things like that. So I'm, I'm sure uh, we are all set and done for 2024. The India bloc is all set uh, to give a tough fight to Bharatiya Janata Party and Modi. Uh, at the center. Can I respond, please? I like that optimism, George, you have. But Charu, Charu, final response coming in from you. Both uh, Ashutosh ji and uh, George ji have a lot of optimism and I wish them all the best. But uh, let's look at the writing on the wall, shall we? Congress said that they have an alliance. They couldn't even keep that alliance together. Congress said they are discussing the seat share all the way from June last year till now. It's uh, mid-March. They couldn't discuss the seat share and that is why other political parties got frustrated and release their own lists. That's the truth of Congress. With your first list, you've actually exhausted every single known Congress name that you had. And that's the truth. Because apart from these names, there's nobody else who's even willing to contest. And you are as aware of that as I am. So I am sorry. If you think having a leader who's waltzing across the country at a time where he should have been with his alliance partners is a big green flag for the voters of this country, no, you let me tell you it's that not. Mamta let let me also she tell you, Ashutosh ji, wait now. Ashutosh ji, I didn't interrupt you. I know, I know, I know, I'm riling you up. I'm riling you up, but don't get so riled up. No, Listen to what I'm saying. She's a person who was a minister with Vajpayee government, who has had ties with BJP. You know, the thing is, can I, 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 can a quick response to that. A quick response to that. Hold on, Ashutosh, Ashutosh, one minute. Oh, Ashutosh and Charu. Now, as far as raising questions about the Bharat Jodo Nyayatra, forget about the BJP. India Alliance members themselves have asked this question. Your former ally Nitish Kumar asked that question. Mamata Banerjee, on, because of that, Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra almost ended up telling you that you don't even deserve one single seat. So forget about the BJP. It's the it's your own allies who have been saying this. Charu, I'm running short of time, so they, they make your no final allies. comment. They, they are, they no, are I'm, 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 I'm going to be very quick. Ashutu Ji, please listen. Uh, please listen. Are, uh, don't do Mamata this. Banerjee and Nitish Kumar both are BJP okay. Trojan horses. Let's remember Ashutu, that. Charu, this is Charu, 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 just make, make, make your final point because I'm really running short of time now. And they were just trying to... Ashutosh ji, I'll come back to you later on. I'll come back to you. Charu. It's not helping anyone. So the word nyay actually is rattling Charu, too. And I think you are right to be rattled. Because five years ago, you chose the same word nyay and you went around screaming up, Oga Nyay. The people of India gave you nyay. 
and uh, this time forget you about see now and now even your own partners are saying mamta this is saying congress can't get 40 seats you know our party chief ministers are saying ek close on what they are talking about you like you're already in the past tense you don't even exist in the present ashutosh sir what are you saying about you charu george and charu george and ashutosh okay okay I'm sorry, I okay. upset you, but I that's the so truth. I think so. You know, you might as well take this it debate now. is going to continue. This debate is going to continue. It's just the beginning of the poll season. This is just the beginning of the poll season. You know, the list is. There are more lists to come out. There are more lists to come out. Let's see if the Congress Party still thinks rethinks this entire after after what we have seen from the two lists that have been put out by the Bharatiya Janata Party. That's all that we could pack in this edition of the trending burning question. On the other side, the big debate coming up with the editor in chief or Nub Goswami. Amity faculty have filed over 2100 patents yet another reason why Amity has been ranked among the top for innovation achievements we in india know better than almost any other country and even today parts of india are occupied by another country but we did not see the world uh, respond saying oh there's a great principle involved and therefore let us all go with india yes today we are being uh, told that there are principles involved i wish i had seen that principle in play for the last 80 years i've seen those principles cherry picked when it suits people my prime minister has stood next to president putin and has said that we do not believe that this is an era of war 
We are today for in terms of relationship with Russia, uh, India. Uh, the, in terms of uh, the border uh, conflict uh, with Russia, uh, you have been talked about the importance of the territorial uh, integrity and uh, sovereignty. But uh, you have not uh, come out in terms of criticizing uh, Russia aggression to Ukraine. And people may think that this is double standard. So what would be your position on this comment? You know, uh, my position would be uh, that the world uh, is a complicated place. And there are many important uh, principles and beliefs in the world. Uh, what happens sometimes in politics, in world politics, is countries pick one issue, one situation, uh, one principle, and they highlight it because it suits them. But if one uh, looks at, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the principle itself, I mean, we in India know better than almost any other country uh, because immediately after our independence uh, we experienced uh, aggression, uh, we experienced an effort to change our boundaries and even today parts of India are occupied by another country. But we did not see the world uh, respond saying, oh there's a great principle involved and therefore let us all go with India. So yes, today we are being uh, told that there are principles involved. I wish I had seen that principle in play for the last 80 years. I've seen those principles cherry-picked when it suits people and not when it doesn't suit people. But, but I do think it's an important principle, you know, because, uh, you know, uh, 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 I would say injustice was done to us. I'm not advocating it should be done to everybody else. We are, uh, you know, we have been very clear my Prime Minister has stood next to President Putin and has said that we do not believe that this is an era of war. We are today for resolving this conflict. We want to see the end to this conflict. But we believe that every conflict finally ends in some kind of, you know, people come to the table. That's how conflicts end. I mean, you can also decide a conflict on the battlefield, but we don't think this conflict will be decided on the battlefield. In the arid terrain of Rajasthan's Pokhran, Indian military might on display a first-of-its-kind exercise. Tri-services hold mega-exercise Bharat Shakti. From the LCA Tejas fighter jets, robotic mules, T-90 tanks to the Pinaka multi-barrel rocket launcher. Tri-services displayed their prowess during the fire and manoeuvre exercise at Pokhran field firing ranges. Exercise Bharat Shakti simulated realistic, synergized, multi-domain operations displaying integrated operational capabilities of the Indian Armed Forces to counter threats across land, air, sea, cyber and space domains. The Indian Army's Special Forces, the Indian Navy's Marcos and the Garuds of the Indian Air Force infiltrated a simulated battlefield in all terrain vehicles and conducted slithering operations while surveillance of the battlefield was carried out by remotely piloted aircraft and drones. This was followed by the degradation of targets by long-range vectors and artillery guns. Indian Navy showcased naval anti-ship missiles, autonomous cargo-carrying aerial vehicles and expendable aerial targets highlighting maritime strength and technological sophistication. Indian Air Force deployed the indigenously developed light combat aircraft Tejas, light utility helicopters and advanced light helicopters demonstrating air superiority and versatility in air operations. 
Centre reiterates CAA won't impact Muslims. Opposition fearmongers, protests escalate. Can CAA withstand a legal challenge? Debating at 9 p.m. Assalamu alaikum. ये मैं National Bank Model Colony से branch manager बात कर रहा हूँ। आज सुबह हमारे पास नया cash आया है, जिसमें के ये note हैं और हजार के भी आए हैं, पांच सौ के भी और पांच हजार के भी। सारा fresh cash है और इसमें जो है वो ये हालात हैं इन notes के, ये और इस तरह के कितने packet चले गए हैं मुझे नहीं पता अब लोग वापस लेकर आएंगे तो पता चलेगा ये तो एक आदमी ने कस्टमर ने वापस किया है तो ये पता चला इसके अलावा हमने एक और बंडल भी चेक किया ये एक और पैकेट है इसमें भी यही हाल है ये सीरियल है आपको दिखाता हूँ ये सीरियल है ये सीरियल है इसकी और इसमें ये एक नोट है अठाईस है उनतीस उनतीस तरह का उनतीस बीस तरह का ये ये दो दो नोट हर पैकेट में दो नोट इस तरह से हैं ये क्या सिलसिला है This finally made State Bank of Pakistan to take notice of it and issued a clarification. According to the spokesperson of State Bank of Pakistan, it was not a case of fake currency note. Rather, these notes were somehow misprinted and there was nothing to worry about. Nobody has to worry about it. And according to the spokesperson, uh, anyone who can get hold of these currency notes accidentally they can get it exchanged from nearby uh, uh, any branch of the bank but one thing is for sure Pakistanis are banned it was only last year when fake uh, notes of rupees 5000 shot every Pakistani and so far the Pakistani authorities could not come up uh, uh, Center reiterates CAA won't impact Muslims. Opposition fearmongers, protests escalate. Can CAA withstand a legal challenge? Debating at 9 p.m. Delhi studios of Republic TV. It's time for Arnab Goswami on the debate.
Rahul Swami on the debate at 9. Presented by Amity University, powered by RP Sanjeev Goenka, Century Club Prime and Policy Bazaar. Good evening viewers and welcome to the debate. In the course of the last two or three days since the government notified the Citizenship Amendment Act, or should I rather call it the Citizenship Amendment Bill because it has been passed by both houses of parliament, you have heard the usual arguments being made, the kind of arguments that you heard just before COVID during Shaheen Bagh, Muslims will be discriminated. This is ultra vires of the constitution. It will be put up to a legal check before the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court will turn it down, etc., etc. And tonight, therefore, I think that since we have the opportunity and the time, let's put this to a reasonable test. The test of logic. The test of certainty. Ladies and gentlemen, to say that the Supreme Court will turn down or reject the citizenship amendment bill is preposterous. Firstly, because the Supreme Court knows the limits within which it has to operate and respects the rights of the legislature and the rights of the elected government and the rights of parliament to even expect that the Supreme Court of India will arbitrarily simply cancel something passed by elected governments and passed by both houses of parliament is absolutely unbelievable. It will never happen. Second, tonight what I will do is I will put those naysayers who say that the citizenship amendment bill is anti-Muslim to a legal test of logic. Let me present a few of my basic arguments to you. If you say, why not Muslims? If Christians, Parsis, if Sikhs, if Buddhists, if all of them and Hindus, of course, are to be allowed from neighboring countries of Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan, to be fast-tracked into getting Indian citizenship, why not Muslims? Well, I have not heard anything more ridiculous. It's essentially because these Islamic nations are anti-minority and have allowed for decades the systematic persecution of anyone who is non-Muslim on their soil, as a result of which their numbers have been going down in extreme measures. Everyone knows that and yet they want to deny it. I don't understand why. Secondly, some people say you've introduced a filter of religion in the test of citizenship. That's madness to say that. Religion is not the filter. Any logical person would say that. Persecution is the filter. Torture is the filter. Denial of human rights is the filter. Religion is not the filter. And then some people say, why not Muslims? If you take that argument tomorrow, you'll say, why not people from Iceland? Why not people from Argentina? Well, essentially, because persecution is the filter in this case. And then finally, the politically correct set who know so little about the law and live in a la-la land say, Article 14, Article 14. Well, do they not know about Article 15? And what does Article 15 of the Constitution say? Article 15 of the Constitution says that the state shall not discriminate against any citizen of India on any grounds, race, gender, region, place of birth, so on and so forth. Operational word being, the state shall not discriminate against any citizen of India. Which means once you become a citizen of India, you're equal to all. Doesn't matter what your place of origin is. Doesn't matter if your origin was from Pakistan, or your origin was from Argentina, or your origin is from Afghanistan. Once you are a citizen. Article 15 makes it extremely clear that once you are a citizen, that test of equality, that test of lack of discrimination applies to you. Now, the constitution of India, I presume everybody should understand, is for Indian citizens. Therefore, to avoid a reference to Article 15 in order to mislead people of this country against the Citizenship Amendment Act is childish. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a long way to go in the debate tonight. But I hope that you will be with me because I'm going to put the test of logic to all the anti-arguments put against the Citizenship Amendment Bill. To be a large country, to be a Vixit Bharat, we have to have a big heart. And the Citizenship Amendment Bill is that way of showing to the world that we have a big heart, that we are human, humane and humanitarian. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to you with 
two fundamental debates tonight. The first, where I put the test of reason and logic on the citizenship amendment bill and why I believe it will not just withstand, but it will absolutely demolish any legal challenge. On debate number one, I am joined by the one and only legal jurist par excellence, Mahesh Jet Malani, who's put out a really good piece on CA and CAB. Now you also know that a list of 72 more names from the BJP was announced. I think I'm seeing a trend here. I'm seeing former chief ministers being brought in. I'm seeing more OBC names. I'm seeing people who have not fought the Lok Sabha elections being taken out of Rajya Sabha and being made to fight Lok Sabha elections. So I've seen a purpose there behind what the BJP is doing. And in the run up to 24, I'm sure you'll love my analysis of that at, at uh, tonight. Uh, but before that, here are the headlines. Of course, this Wednesday evening on the debate tonight. Despite the center's clear stand on the citizenship law, the Muslim League moves the top court seeking an, a stay on CAA rules. BJP's second list is out, retains top guns, gives more tickets to former chief ministers. <coughs> BJP swings a big surprise in Karnataka. Seven sitting MPs drop. Bomai Yadubir picked. Youth leader Tejasvi Surya retained from Bangalore South. Haryana's political thriller concludes with uh, former Chief Minister Mohan Lal Khattar now put in the Lok Sabha race. Hate politics at its peak once again. Hindi minister insults the Prime Minister in a purported video. And fight within the family. Major curiosity as uh, Mamta cuts all ties with her own brother, Baboon after Baboon fights with her over not being given a ticket. So first, let's begin tonight by understanding where the whole CAA debate is placed. Tonight, you can consider the next 50 minutes an explainer on why the Citizenship Amendment Bill is anything but against Muslims in the country. Here it is. As India celebrates rollout of citizenship law, opposition has been resorting to fear-mongering tactics. So we are not separating. CAE or NRC. CAE is very much related with NRC. We don't want any detention camp. Bangladesh, se, Pakistan, if you put your hands on your hands, you don't know who are you, what 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 are you, Center has reiterated that CAA won't curtail the freedom and opportunity of Indian Muslims. It asserted that there is no bar on Muslims from anywhere in the world to seek Indian citizenship. The center has clarified that there is no provision concerning deportation. IUML, on the other hand, has moved Supreme Court, seeking stay on the implementation of CAA, calling it unconstitutional. Can CAA withstand legal challenge? Let's debate. We're setting up the debate with Mahesh Jait Malani tonight. Mr. Jait Malani, I'll cut the chase on a couple of issues because I'm going to start with 10 minutes with you and then go straight to the debate. That's what I promised my viewers tonight. 
Mr. Jait Malani, you and I agree on where we stand, but I will uh, play the devil's advocate with you and I'll put three questions to you. First, that if the idea is to help persecuted people, then why not Tamil Hindus? Are they not persecuted in a Muddhist majority nation? Why not Rohingyas? Are Rohingya Muslims not persecuted in Myanmar? And why not Ahmadiyas? from Pakistan, are they not persecuted in Sunni-dominated Pakistan? All right. We'll take, we'll take each of the them. Point, the point uh, being, the, the simple point being, sorry to conclude this, that this is damn arbitrary. You know, the argument being made is that the government is doing something very arbitrary. It's picking and choosing who is discriminated and who is not. Look, this is an extremely time-specific and purpose-specific statute, Right. You had refugees in this country who have been there for a long time, who have been victims of religious persecution. Right. And most of them are from our neighboring countries, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh. There's a cutoff date that's after 2014, these refu refugees who come from these countries, this law will not apply. But pre-2014 refugees who have become refu refugees as a result of state persecution and have fled the country on the grounds of religious uh, grounds, they will be granted citizenship by the government. Now, we, this is therefore a time specific and as I said, religious specific. Now, let us come to the uh, two issues which are the same, the two examples you mentioned, which stand on a similar footing. The first one is the Rohingyas and the second one are the Sri Lankan Tamils. Now, as far as the Rohingyas are concerned, that is not a ground of religious persecution. And this does not mean that other forms, this statute doesn't exclude giving refuge or citizenship to people persecuted on other grounds. First, let's understand that. This deals with a particular situation, which is of refugees of long-standing suffering, 2014 right? and even prior. Now, as far as the Rohingyas are concerned, this is not an Indian problem. This is a dispute between Myanmar and Bangladesh. The ground, there are a lot of uh, uh, non-Rohingya Muslims in uh, Myanmar who are not being persecuted. It is only the Rohingyas on the, it's an ethnic issue. The Myanmar government believes that the Rohingyas, right, well, are not are not nationals are not original nationals of Myanmar. The British during colonial rule, in order to get labor for tea estates etc. in Burma, transported the Rohingyas from Bangladesh to Myanmar, then the Burmese state, for because there was a labor shortage. They have never accepted them. Accepted them. This is the dispute. The Myanmar wants to send them back to Bangladesh. The dispute, therefore, between two countries and not India. Now, why should India get involved in this? Right? Why should India, of all people, or of all countries, have to face the burden of refugees? By the same which argument, are, which are created, which which are with you, by the same argument, why should India get involved in who Pakistanis are discriminating against? Why should India get involved in who the Taliban are discriminating against? Because, because, because this is the ground of religious persecution, right? The, as I said, please see the... How is religious persecution more important? Uh, allow me to push you a little on this. How yes, is religious yes. persecution, can Mr. Jait Maladi tell me, more important or more relevant than persecution on grounds of race, caste, sex, or place of yes. birth, or language? Now, one minute, Radhi, right? First of all... Please don't Article get my 15. name wrong. I'll... Take things like that very personally. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've just I've just come out. out of, I've just come out of an interview with Rajdeep. So you know, it's a, it, it's just a. I can only empathize. Know, no, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no offense, the not be taken. Yeah, I mean, so you're true. both anchors on different channels with different views. Right now, look. As I said, this is a long-standing problem. The Rohingya issue. Right. You first have to tackle a long-standing problem. As I said, this is time-specific, which is why I keep harping on this. These are people who've been here as refugees prior to 2014. So let's tackle each refugee problem one at a time and on its own merit. 
First, we have taken the grounds of religious persecution. And the religious persecution is from neighboring states. So all this legal whataboutry, right? The question that should be posed is to those people who are, who are in, indulging in this legal whataboutry, right? That are you opposed to this refugees being given citizenship in India who have been victims of abominable religious persecution, right? Of the worst kind from Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh, right? This is a long-standing problem, much more ancient in time than the Rohingya issue. Are you opposed but to who this? decides what is ancient and what is not? Yes. So what is the filter of what is ancient and what is not? I can say, I can say that today uh, somebody will say a five-year-old dispute is relatively important to me and should be seen to be ancient because the intensity of the discrimination in five years equals the intensity of the uh, you know the, the nature of distribution over half a century. But These Alain, are all subjective Alain, things. Arnav, you are not somebody who decides priorities. The government does. They are elected. This is an exercise of sovereign power. You might find it unreasonable, right? But yours is just a view. Yeah, Can but my view is based... Up? My view, my view will be based on what is in the constitution. Excuse me, one minute. Let me finish up. Can you criticize this act on its own merit? No. Can I? It is only can what, I? It is only what about three? You can you no, can so, so, about so, the choice of priorities. But that is not for you. No, the, the point is the point is the most fashionable pursuit nowadays on which poetry is written, prose is written, uh, novels will be written, films are made, is Article 14. Equality yeah. before the law. So it says that this... It's a It's a catch-all, but, 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 but this is CA. CA is anti-Article 14. Yes. Is it not? No, it's not. It's not. Because you have Article 15, which specifically deals with the issue on hand. It says that the states shall no, not don't go to don't go to Article 15. Go to, stay on Article 14, which but says you can't ever, you can't, not, look. So yesterday one of the panelists came and said to me that the states shall not deny to any person equality before the law. Arnab, I any you let me answer the answer the question or you answer your own question. One minute. Kindly bear with me since you've asked the question. Bear with me. Article 15 is an article which deals specifically with religious discrimination. Yes or no? Who does it confine it to? It confines it to citizens of India, not putative citizens, not aspiring citizens, not wannabe citizens. There's a specific provision for that. You don't know oh, saying when you have a special. You are saying a Parsi sitting in Afghanistan or a Hindu yes. sitting in Pakistan today yes. is not in the territory of India and therefore Article 14 does not apply to him. Yes, of course, Article 14 doesn't apply. Article 14 applies. But when there's a special, you know, you're, mis you're missing the point. Please see what I'm, hear what I'm saying. Article 15 is a specific article which deals with discrimination on the ground, on all matters, on the ground of race, religion, etc. That is only available to citizens of India. Citizen, Non-citizens don't have that right. For them to get citizenship of India, is an indulgence on the part of the government of India. Really, I mean, you know, viewers, this is as like this, you know, it's like saying, let me put it this way, and I actually agree with Mahesh Jet Malani, it's like saying that Donald Trump should be brought under Article 14. Technically, he cannot be because he's not a citizen of India. It's like saying that uh, Rishi Sunak should be brought under Article 14. Mahesh Jetpalani says, no, he is not a citizen of India and he's not in the territory of India. So these are very clear qualifiers. But tell me, Mahesh uh, Jetpalani ji, will the Supreme Court get into this? You know, this debate has been on. How far does the Supreme Court go? What is, where does the judiciary stop? Where did the executive start? You know, left to a lobby in Delhi, left to a lobby in Delhi, the Supreme Court would be overrunning the elected government and parliament every day. This challenge to CA has been has been there in some kind of a you know status quo in, in, in Supreme Court for the last two to three years. You think the court will get into it? You think Justice Chandrachur will get into it? What's uh, your hunch? You know, uh, Arnab, I don't want to, I have, you know, it, it, it's, I, I, I don't critique the Supreme Court, right? Because 
it's an institution which deserves the highest respect right but <laughs> if they do cross the line it's best left left to their own wisdom i have a view on the caa right uh, i have a view on the plethora of litigation that's coming to the supreme court mainly politically uh, motivated but if the supreme court this is their jurisdiction right? it is yeah. the wisdom of the court to decide what matters it wants to interfere in right and it's yeah, yeah. it's an area which is beyond judicial review right it is for those who are standing for the state to point yeah. that out the supreme court vehemently that you are now in an area which is beyond your purview that's all yeah, i would sure say right no i'm i'm sure I, you you are uh, on that i can understand the delicate ground you are in given the fact that you are a member of parliament uh, you know you're with the bjp but you're also a leading uh, supreme court advocate so i won't push you on that one but mr jeet palani you set it up really well and i i do recommend that everybody reads mahesh jeet palani's piece on why the ca is constitutionally sound and unfairly picked apart by its enemies i'm going to with your permission put it on our website tomorrow so everybody can read that and that gets filtered Certainly. through thank you mahesh jeet palani thank you for joining thank me you. setting up thank the debate you. tonight okay i have with me tonight hitesh jain well known lawyer and uh, he's of course with the bjp ajay alok national spokesperson of the bjp sohail seth leading public intellectual and uh, back on our show tonight waris patan national spokesperson and former mla of the mim and ahmed ayaz so we have everyone on uh, firstly i want to start with sohail the last question i asked sohail you know you 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 move around in these circles you know people from the judiciary people from law people from uh, politics What's your sense? You know, you think the Supreme Court will get into it beyond a point? Not at all. I think the separation between the church and the state, if violated by the Supreme Court, will have ramifications which go beyond the CAA. Number one. Number two. For all those woke liberals who are talking about the CAA being anti-Muslim, need to go back and study our history. Jawaharlal Nehru and Sardar Patel laid the foundations of the differentiation between people who were displaced and people who were evacuees. The first set of migration that happened in March 1947 <coughs> happened from Pakistan, West Pakistan to India. The second round was Muslims returning in 1948, by which time a lot of the properties were actually used to house the displaced people. Number yes. three, as Mahesh Jethwanani rightly says, it is the prerogative of the government of India to determine who will get citizenship. It is also the prerogative of the government of India to deny citizenship to people who, be who it believes are either a national threat or are inimical, inimical to the interests of India. So if the government of India withdraws someone's OCI or someone's citizenship, it is the prerogative of the government for the Supreme Court to get into it. And by the way, Arda, on your Republic Summit platform, the yeah. noted lawyer Harish Salve has already said that it is the tyranny of the judges electing the judges. And I'm telling you one thing, all said and done, you've got a very balanced, wise, reasonable Chief Justice of India in Justice Chandrachur. I don't yeah. think he, more than anyone else, will no. go to the extent of non-determining or actually violating the principles of the separation between church and state, qua parliament and the judiciary. This is my belief. But there are experts I, like my good I, friend Varis Patan, yeah. who always has a view on everything. So we'll wait to see what he says. Okay. okay. We set it up well. I'm opening today by saying we'll have statement, counter-statement. And uh, I will get first Varis to, to uh, you know, have his first joust with Ajay Alok. Then I will bring the other two panelists in. I want to make it very organized because it's a legal and political issue. Waris, give me one reason, or rather don't give me, give Ajay Alok one reason on the legality or illegality as you see it of the CA. Then I'll get him to respond and we'll take it very logically. Please, Waris. <clears throat> well, Arna. To begin with, there are two, three points. So to begin with, let me tell you, the CAA is discriminatory. It is based on the religion. It is against the Article 14 and hence it is unconstitutional. There are several Supreme Court judgments which say that you cannot form a law on the basis of religion. And here they have made a law. 
Now you cannot read the CA in isolation. You will have to see the CA along with the NPR and the NRC. What happened in the NRC in Assam? It was the Supreme Court to monitor exercise conducted there in Assam where crores of rupees were spent. And what happened ultimately? What the result was there? More than 10 to 15 lakh names of our Hindu brothers and sisters were missing from that. More than 2 lakh names of the Muslims were missing from the list. Amongst them were the Chief Justice of uh, Bihar earlier. His and his family's names were missing. Now, what will happen if the CA is uh, made out that thus those Hindu brothers and sisters whose names were missing in the NRC, they will definitely get the citizenship as per the new CAA draft law. But what about the Muslims? They will not get the citizenship. They will have to approve the foreigners' tribunal. That is a difficulty. That is why we say it is against the Muslims, the Dalits, and the others. Thirdly, let me remind you, Arnab. No, no, why not? Why now? You made your, you, why you made now? Your because first point. you just three, three I, I, days I, I, are remaining. That and no, 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 asking, Arnab, just I ten said, seconds. I said you ten give seconds, one point. I will finish my no, no, argument. One, 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 just give me ten I said seconds. One point, one counter. Just ten one seconds, point, one counter. I will stay ten by that rule today. Ten seconds of your valuable time. No, no, no. I won't even give you ten seconds right now because I want a counter to the first point. Uh, from Ajayalo. Then I'll be able to take it forward very systematically. I will only place on record that as much as I want NRC. Okay. The government has clarified right now there is no NRC. So this is all what Waris Pathan is doing is trying to create something where none exists. Ajayalo can respond. Ajay and Waris on a versus. Ajay. First of all, first of all, Arnav, I would like to say very politely to Waris Bhai that T, please don't try and mix CA and NRC, it has nothing to do with it, number one. Number two, as far as the legal claim goes that it is uh, not according to law, according to constitution, article 14, 15, what blah blah, I guess you have must have listened to Mr. Mahesh Jait Malani ji, you are yourself a lawyer, you know you are, you are contradicting yourself. Now the CA is not a new chapter in the Indian political system or in the Indian constitution. If you remember, there is a famous Nehru Liaquat Pact, the failure of that pact, the failure of that pact which determines the religious minority, religious beliefs of the minority community in both the countries need to be secured by the respective government and Pakistan failed on that count. That itself was the starter to the CAA. My question is, politically my question is, why we were silent on CAA? If you say that we made the law in 2019 and because of uh, uh, elections we have released, no. We wanted to make, make a perception, people well aware about the CAA and today we have achieved that, so this law has been notified. And second thing, what you are trying to place in front of the Muslim masses, that is going to take away the rights of Muslims. CAA has nothing to do with Muslims, nothing. CAA does not give citizenships to Muslims, CAA does not take citizenship from Indian Muslims. So the Muslim does not come into the picture. You are just trying to do it to take the political mileage from the Muslim community, which you have, you have used, whether the Ghamandia or those AIMIMM people. This is a clear cut act that we are going to give citizenship to the religious minorities who are being persecuted from three countries and we have seen the exodus, how the exodus was there. Don't forget there were 18% Hindus in Pakistan after partition, today not even 1%. Yeah. Where they have gone? Either they have been converted or either they have been killed or they ran away. And you want, whether it is Hindu, it is Parsi, whether it is Sikh, Sikh in Afghanistan, in the windows. whether it is Jains. I mean, you have to think sympathetic. We have to think in large hurt. India is not a small country. We are a place of whole religion. We are place. Of, we are home to many religions, and definitely, it's our duty know, but your to look after this. Right. And yeah. we have to look a humanistic approach, not a communal approach like you. So that's yeah, what we I, are doing. And CAA I, is I, a reality. I'm, I'm, we have gone to the court. I'm, the court will take may, may strong I, decision. I, I will now. I will now subject may, the may CA to the equality test. One minute. One. Go, are you? You one minute. One minute. One. Let me first of all get everyone in. The windows are too static right now, Aditi, on the program because I'm not seeing Hitesh. Uh, yes, thank you for introducing Abbas also into the debate. Now, point number one, Hitesh and Abbas are on the debate. Abbas and Hitesh. First of all, we res do we respect do we respect parliament? I, 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 it has come down to this. If we want to disrespect parliament, Hitesh and Abbas, the, because you people cannot get elected or you can never have a majority in parliament, you decide. I respect my parliament. And Article 11 of the Constitution says that nothing in the foregoing provisions of the part shall derogate from the power of Parliament to make any provision with respect to the acquisition or termination of citizenship and all matters relating to citizenship. It says Parliament. 
it does not say Supreme Court with the greatest respect to the Supreme Court. So, I mean, first of all, if you are going to say that in, in India, parliament does not matter, then you first say we should can cancel Article 11 of the Constitution. Abbas, your counter and then Hitesh on this first point. No, no, we, we respect parliament, we respect the parliamentary democracy and we also respect the cause of the parliamentary democracy. But unfortunately, the party which is set, sitting in the government does not do that. Time and again, they have tried to prove by their action that they don't respect the parliamentary democracy. Because you see, there, there's no uh, deputy uh, speaker in the Lok Sabha. There is no, the, the number of ordinance has gone up multiple times. The referring of bill to parliamentary committees has gone down by multiple times. So which this is what has happened in the rule of Bharatiya Janata Party. You will, so they don't Abbas, respect parliamentary democracy at all. Abbas, and Abbas I'll give you. to the undermine the <coughs> Abbas, opposition parties Abbas, by using agencies Abbas, against them. This has never Abbas, happened. Don't go off track. Abbas, don't go off track. Every party. debate is not no, a debate on ED and CBI. Party. No, I am asking you. Okay, I'm giving you an open forum. I'm giving you an open forum. So wait one minute. One minute. I'm giving you an open forum. There is a man called Hitesh Jain there. Okay, yes, he's in politics and public life, but basically he's a lawyer for a living. You have one minute to prove to Hitesh Jain, okay, <coughs> that there is a provision of the constitution that CA violates. You prove to I, him. See, I'm saying that there are already uh, laws in place to give uh, citizenship to people, to, to people who have, you know... Uh, no, you who, give anything have, about... No, no. no you, 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 you prove that... I am giving you open, uninterrupted time to prove okay. that this article, this paragraph, this point of the constitution is violated by CAB. No, no I am saying that there were already existing laws in place which could give citizenship to these people who have been prosecuted. Only hey, that's right. that it could have been expedited. But the government has right. never done so, and I'm telling you, if you if you talk about the uh, you know uh, sex schedule once, yeah, come on, yeah, come on, which differentiate uh, on the basis of the religion, which is against the constitution. One thing. Second thing, I'm I'm saying that you know they so where where does it where does it discriminate? Not expedite. Where does it discriminate? One minute. Where does it discriminate? Because the, the citizenship <laughs> form has to be referred from one committee to another committee, then to another committee. So it is nothing just to you know Bharatiya Janata Party's back on the divisive agenda and that is why they have come up with CEA and for, for four and a half years they have been waiting because there were no Lok Sabha election at that time otherwise it would have hardly taken 24 or 48 hours to you know uh, come up with the rules of the uh, CEA so why you you can any even a child can understand that why they took four and a half year because it was not about giving citizenship to anyone it was about Dividing I, the the cause of our nation, dividing the communal, uh, secular family. What are you nation. saying, Baba? This is what they want to do. Hitesh, that, on that, okay, I'll give, I'll let Hitesh respond now. I let Hitesh Allah, respond now. You have given 180 seconds to Abbas, but except rhetoric and platitudes, there is no argument. I'm glad you bought Article 11, and the genesis of Article 11 yeah. clearly says that the Parliament can make any laws, including the laws on citizenship. Now let me take you a step back to the great Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. <laughs> who during the Constituent Assembly debate, specifically when this provision of citizenship was being debated, it says that as to what should be the criteria of the citizenship, that should be left to the parliament to decide. So when the action, when you read uh, Article 11, including the constitutional debate, it sufficiently provides parliament on the first of, uh, on the first legal aspect as to whether the parliament has a right and authority to make the law. Yes, the parliament yeah. has a right and authority to make the law. Now, let me deal with the second argument. Now, everyone is talking about Article 14 discrimination and all. Article 14 also permits any lawyer who goes to the law student who or even a school going uh, ch uh, child, uh, ninth standard, 10th standard student will tell you that Article 14 permits reasonable classification. And when it permits reasonable classification, it also allows discrimination. And in this case, the reasonable classification is the targeted section that is the per to provide protection to the persecuted minorities. Unfortunately, the problem is people just look at one area. You don't look at the law properly. Article 14 deals with two aspects, equal protection of law and equality before law. And when it deals with the equality before law, it does permit reasonable classification. And the same lobby who continues to oppose all these things only on the basis of platitudes and rhetoric, 
they are aware they day in day out they argue on the reasonable classification this is the open and shut case and according to me it is not going to stand in the supreme court it, they are going to fall flat on the, their face you see this particular debate today abbas abbas yeah. this debate is getting a very unique response from our viewers tonight they are saying that this is the first time on a debate on television that you are seeing reasonable arguments put you see i swear i have a choice of doing this debate if i do the usual tutu me me debate that happens and let waris patan lose then in a minute you are anti muslim you are this you are pro hindu you are this you are sanghi kongi that starts i this is a very reasonable argument people who don't study and i am telling you anchors also are responsible and tv channels who don't do any research just allow that kind of debate and allow people like waris patan to vitiate the atmosphere it's very wrong but i am saying tonight you so you want to make a comment on that yeah so No, there's no point laughing. You know, you're trapped, so I, I you're laughing. Yes, sir. Bye, bye. Lighter yes. wind. Varis, very. In a lighter wind. In a lighter wind. In a lighter wind, Arna. In a lighter wind. Let me remind. So, lighter so wind. No, I mean, I am in a heavy mood. So, so just heavy, heavy mood. So no lighter wind when I am in. A, I am in a heavy mood. No, no, no. Lighter wind. So, we will agree with you. Arna, so we will. So, my friend will agree with me and endorse my views. That in the last ten years, we have been debating with you. This is the first time we see that yes, we are debating properly. Silently, everybody is being given a chance to make this point. And so, we will also agree with that. This A M I M M. So, we will allow the people to speak. In the last ten years, first time we are seeing this kind of nature. The problem with the problem with Varis Patan is, if a tree falls outside his house. He will make it into a Hindu-Muslim issue. He be Hindu ne. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well said, well Now, said. Now here's the thing, Baris. Everyone knows that no. this is what you do. No, no, no. You no. don't genuinely believe in it because in your heart you're a secular human being. You want to come across as communal because you need your yeah. votes, which is fine. We all respect that. My issue here is we are discussing the Constitution of India. For that other, for my good friend Abbas to say, why do you need to amend laws? You had hundreds of amendments to the laws. You had hundreds of amendments to the constitution. There is no such thing as the perfect law, the perfect constitution. Now, the other gentleman and Varis Padhan asked, "Why are they doing it now?" Let me tell you, at any time that the government would have done it, you would have had a problem. You remind me of the issues that we used to have in Bengal under the communists. They had a problem for every solution. No matter what Modi does, you will find fault. no matter what the government does you will find fault no matter now here's the thing if we have to be mature as a democracy we have to protect our citizens we have to protect our laws and we have to protect our constitution to constantly rake mud to constantly uh, raise objections now these are the very people you some of you actually raised a finger of doubt on our supreme court but the day the supreme court gave judgments which found favor with you they became woke enough and no, liberal enough no no i Until i will put it to the litmus test the i will put it to litmus test i will put it i will put it to a solid litmus test now ajay alok here is varish patan fighting for the rights of uh muslims muslims from pakistan who are not being allowed to india muslims from bangladesh who are not being allowed to india he wants all muslims to be brought in okay uh happens. watch this viewers watch watch what happens now and everybody just watch what happens when i ask him the next question ajay alo watch this tell me one thing i want everyone on the screen because i want their facial expressions to be seen when varis responds to this question ajay alo my question to varis is this varis uh, do you want ahmadiyas from pakistan also to be brought into india on grounds of discrimination and if ahmadiyas are brought from pakistan to india on grounds of discrimination allow me to complete quietly my friend i'm roasting you will you promise that your leader ovc does not discriminate against them is it true or not that your leader ovc is totally anti ahmadiyya one minute one minute let me complete one minute that your leader ovc does not consider ahmadiyas to be muslim that your leader ovc yeah. and his all india muslim personal law board let me complete ha huh? does not uh, uh, ahmadiyas are not allowed hmm. to be members or representation in the all india muslim personal law board 
Who will you stand with? Will you stand with a Jamate Islami Hind who will ask for a social boycott or Ahmadiyas? Right? You are the people why who discriminate the most. One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Equality, nonsense. One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. I, 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 am, I am asking a question. No, no, no. One minute, one minute. He talks about equality. He talks about constitution. He speaks about rights of an individual. We have already filed a petition before the Holocaust. Ask him about Ahmadiyas and the views of Ahmadiyas. Ask him about Ahmadiyas and the views of Ahmadiyas. Ask him about Ahmadiyas and the views of Ahmadiyas. Ask him about Ahmadiyas and the views of Ahmadiyas. Ask him about Ahmadiyas and the views of Ahmadiyas. Ask him about Ahmadiyas and the views of Ahmadiyas. Ask him about Ahmadiyas and the views of Ahmadiyas. Ask him about Ahmadiyas and the views of Ahmadiyas. Ask him about Ahmadiyas and the views of Ahmadiyas. Ask him about Ahmadiyas and the views of Ahmadiyas. Ask him about If you have courage, go against the West. Say today that I will stand against the West and for Emadiyas. Say I am going to stand against the West and for Emadiyas. Say tonight. 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 Say ton
No, 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 no. I'm, walks, walks have gone mad. Are the business yeah, to it? Yeah. Walks are a joke. <laughs> now, now my question is. Not, not my like question that. is. Not, Emma, they ask. Like Emma, they ask. Emma, they ask. The word is discrimination. Like that. Say, you... The word is discrimination. <laughs> the word is discrimination. Article 15 says that discrimination will not happen against any Indian citizen. But the operational word is citizen. The state shall not discriminate against any citizen on grounds of religion, caste, race, place of birth or anything. Now somebody sitting in Pakistan or Afghanistan or Bangladesh today is not an Indian citizen. Once he or she becomes an Indian citizen, Article 15 applies to them, not before. Okay, Arnab. Uh, at the same time, Article... No, let that's me the issue here. Say. See, Arnab, that's that's the issue here. Issue. You see, Arnab, I want to respond to a question that has been no, raised. No, that's the issue no, here, Arnab. Arnab. See, this, is, this, is, this is not that way. More, more, than legal, more, more than legal, more than legal, more than legal it is a politically motivated issue. You see, here you are, here you are doing something for those who are not citizens. And then you are annoying citizens, your own citizens, against to, to see that some help is given to the non-citizens on the religion basis. The religion, uh, when you talk of religion basis, that uh, runs against the constitution also. So if you mean which part uh, of the constitution, citizenship, which article? Okay, okay, I'm countering you. Which which article? Which article? All those persecuted. No, you are saying against constitution, you and you expect me to be quiet. On I know the constitution by heart. You tell me which part of the constitution? So, which so, part of the constitution does it does no, it violate? No, you tell me. No. Which I say, but only the constitution does not allow you any any to discriminate. Which part of the constitution? Any citizen on the basis of religion, color, or creed. See, constitution does not permit you. Here, what you are doing is you are getting certain papers. The constitution only applies to Indian citizens, not to foreigners. Particular company. Yes, sir. Article fourteen gives the constitution only applies to Indian citizens, my dear friend, not to foreigners. So you are discriminating certain people. Get your basics right. If you give give the citizenship to the persecuted people, then why not to keep it open to all? Why not be now listen to me. Listen to me. Okay, okay. Not in favor of giving citizenship to anyone sir, uh, sir, Abbas, who is a Abbas, non-citizen. Uh, Hitesh, so Hitesh, 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 Abbas. You have asked about the Ahmadiyya and other people. Religion, I'm saying, I'm firstly, I want to know, I want to know from you, I want to know from you, I want to know from you where the Samajwadi party will include in its manifesto. Criticism of the All India Pusli Personal Law Board to deny membership to Ahmadiyyas. I'm saying since it's been a reasonable debate, so let me answer you. There has been an important question in the debate. First of all, I'm saying that, you know, anybody would say that that uh, you are giving uh, citizenship to people who are religiously prosecuted. Fine. So according to you, Ahmadiyyas and Hazaras and Shias and Hadiyanis, they are not, they are somehow related to Islam. So you don't want to give citizenship to them. What's wrong with atheists? What's wrong with agnostics? Because Pakistan it is? is not an atheist state, it's Islamic state. They are also there. No, so do we have a caller in the we schedule one C? A solid work argument being put here tonight. We said keep it in the all. So basically the state, the state, I'm saying, the state is trying to undermine equality before law. That is Article 14. I'm saying this. Sir, Hitesh will reply. Hitesh will reply, he's the lawyer. What he's doing? It is He's just parroting the line Article 14 equality. What's wrong with he has to they understand. Really he has no answer on Article 11. He has no answer on the constitutional debate. He has no answer on the fact that this is a targeted measure, not a blanket ex exclusion. He has no answer on the fact that there is a reasonable Article classification. Ultimately, limited. in courts, it is the law and the logic and the constitution that is applicable, not this political ipsy dipsy. You cannot fire the political <laughs> agenda from the shoulders of the court. Question. This is a so pure and simple legal uh, constitutional agree with me. argument, which even the school going children will be able to debate with Abbas. Abbas, I'll tell you one thing. Abbas, I'm sure. Abbas, Abbas, I will answer. Abbas, Abbas, I will answer. I will answer to your question. Uh, Article 14 says equality before the law, okay? Is a Hindu sitting in Pakistan or Parsi sitting in Afghanistan uh, is within the territory of India? No. Article 14 logic does not apply because tomorrow you will say somebody is sitting 
in the Gaza no, Strip, no, Article 14 should apply to him. Somebody sitting in the Gaza Strip, Article 14 should apply to them. Understand what citizenship? No, no, I'm saying. No, no, no. What kind of argument is this? They come here, that will be applied. What kind of argument is this? In Gaza, they will apply. He has Once they come here, it will be quality before the law. Varis, Varis, you're a lawyer, na? Once they become citizens, okay. the Constitution of yeah, India yeah, applies to them. When they are not citizens, how does the Constitution of India apply to them? No, politically, I, I don't know. The, 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 the rule is saying that, that is why the CAA is not a political statement. That, 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 that is the logic to bring the CAA and then bring the NPR in there. I want the political statement. The Indians are left there, they will be given the citizenship. And the Muslims who are living here, they will be making the citizenship. And the Muslims who are living here, they will be making the citizenship. And I want the political statement from Congress supporters. I am not going to be so allowed to ask. What do you want? Simple question, answer to my simple question. Why exclude the Muslims? They don't want Hindus. There are several. They don't want Hindus, Sikh, Parsi, Baud, and Isai to come to India. Spare some time from moving. I want to ask Samajwadi Party. They they must make a statement and the Congress Party that they don't want Hindus, Sikh, Isai, Parsi, and Baud to come to India and get citizenship. Please make a statement. This is anti-constitutional. Make a statement. You can. You have to follow the constitution. I I Our application is petition is pending before the Supreme Court. You was you was I I. I have come to one conclusion. I have one to come conclusion today. I have come to one conclusion. I have, I have, I have, I have come to one conclusion today. That you know, many people doing debates are don't read the citizen, uh, the Constitution of India. To them, I would recommend Part Two, Article Eleven, Article Fifteen, which is to be read in conjunction with Article Fourteen, not alone, and Article Seven. Which effectively lays the foundation for CA. I have read Article 14, and it does not apply to people in the Gaza Strip. Now, you may want it to apply; doesn't make it apply. Now, this has been, however, a great debate. This has been a great debate, and it's an informed debate. And it's a it's it's a it's a debate we've all enjoyed. I thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for debate number one tonight. On the other side, what you should be reading into the selection of candidates by the BJP. In a few minutes, I'm back. Amity faculty have filed over 2100 patents. Yet another reason why Amity has been ranked among the top for innovation achievements. <laughs> to be amongst our people, that we are here to serve them, that this is not a 9 to 5 kind of a responsibility, that this is a 24-7 uh, responsibility that you have to be available for people.
Amity faculty have filed over 2100 patents. Yet another reason why Amity has been ranked among the top for innovation achievements. Assalamualaikum. ये मैं National Bank Model Colony से branch manager बात कर रहा हूँ। आज सुबह हमारे पास नया cash आया है, जिसमें के ये note हैं और हजार के भी आए हैं, पांच सौ के भी और पांच हजार के भी। सारा fresh cash है और इसमें जो है वो ये हालात हैं इन note Amity faculty have filed over 2100 patents. Yet another reason why Amity has been ranked among the top for innovation achievements. Assalamualaikum. ये मैं National Bank Model Colony से branch manager बात कर रहा हूँ। आज सुबह हमारे पास नया cash आया है, जिसमें के ये note हैं और हजार के भी आए हैं, पांच सौ के भी और पांच हजार के भी। सारा fresh cash है और इसमें जो है वो ये